Oh, I am going to enter. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for part two of this saga. We're now going to pivot into our favorite films of 2022 that we share. There's a tendency with top 10 films or top whatever films to like follow like the Oscar trail and, and, you know, maybe base base one's influence on, on what you think is going to be celebrated the most at the end of the year. But we, we certainly have those films, but we wanted to focus on uh, what really stuck with us in our gut. There's just some 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 areas of passion uh, this year at the movies that we just couldn't stop talking about. One of our first favorites of 2022 is Dan Trachtenberg's Prey. Yeah. Really a return to roots uh, for this franchise. Setting it back in the early 1700s, focusing on a Comanche tribe, it immerses it in a a very specific moment in history and from a perspective we don't see enough of. Going back in time also goes back to the bare bones of this conflict, of this story, and makes it as primal as possible. And that is where the predator, when he's in his element, really, 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 truly shines. He is in nature um, where allegedly he should have the leg up. And what is so brilliant about this movie is all the ways it proves that he necessarily doesn't. Amber Midthunder is fantastic. She is. Oh, she's so good. There's an inherent vulnerability to this character because she is female. All the things that the in this world that people expect and don't expect her to do. And that adds just a whole nother layer of intrigue. The predator itself is underestimating her, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, which, mm-hmm. uh, you know, plays very, Works so well very much on, into the story. On multiple layers. It knows how to hunt. I know how to survive. The score was giant. One Sarah of the best Shackman. Of the years. Listen yep. to that a ton since it's come out. Absolutely. Dan Trachtenberg was oh. not trying to undersell this movie in any capacity. It was fully committed to it. It, it you could put this side by side with like The Revenant, and it would be it would Very it would run concurrently mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. And you and I have just talked endlessly about Prey. I know it's controversial, but honestly, this is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, in the Predator series. There was another movie I, neither of us could really shake after seeing it this year no not at all um and that is darren aronofsky's the whale Mm -hmm. brendan fraser plays charlie who is is an addict to food and he has struggled with that it has been as he's experienced a lot of hardships and loss in his life he has spiraled in this addiction and he's really now at these crossroads um in his life where his his physical well-being is on the line his relationship his last chance to connect with his daughter is on the line Mm -hmm. and all the friendships all the people in his life who are stretched thin this is the absolute last stand this movie um is unyielding um Mm -hmm. much like requiem for a dream the wrestler i thought of both of those movies a lot when Mm -hmm. i watched this Mm -hmm. and i understand the conversation that's happening outside of the movie because this movie is tackling subject matter that can be very um, uh, very sensitive for a lot of people, which I can respect. But I also have faith in Darren Aronofsky's intention with this movie. Um, I certainly have faith in Brendan Fraser's performance. I think as unyielding as this story is, it is a story about self-destruction. Uh, it's a story about redemption to an extent everything that you've heard about Brendan Fraser is true. He is, he is, so he is the life force of this film. Sadie Sink, Hong Chow, Samantha Morton, they're, they're all so good, but Brendan really leads the charge in such an amazing way. He is the life force of this film that cracks very uncomfortable subject matter, which has always been what Darren Aronofsky does, but this strive, this constant, painful, uncomfortable strive for salvation is such an ever-present theme in his films Mm -hmm. and it is in no shortage in the whale it showcases that no matter what the literal addiction is when you've gotten to a point of no return and you are unable to fix it what matters most for him partially it is reconnecting with his daughter but it's also just about being decent to people in the face of such anger and negativity and cruelty. 
I couldn't look away the whole time. And not because I thought it was a sideshow, because I thought it was an emotionally earnest movie. People are amazing. I think it holds a mirror to to a lot of things. It holds a mirror to the character Charlie himself. It holds a mirror to the audience. It holds a mirror to... It's mm-hmm. going to be so specific how people filter what they're seeing. And it's reflective in one of the characters played by Ty Simpkins in this movie. There is an aspect to this movie of these characters sort of using Charlie's uh, struggles to self-actualize to feel better about themselves and mm-hmm. that but that's part of the story inherently sadie huh? sink is just she's a she's a sociopath yeah for better or worse afterwards i i just kept thinking of his we talked about this his eyes like mm-hmm. you keep seeing him looking back at you after you see this movie films can be uplifting in their tragedy and that's that's a trend in much of the movies that we share in our favorite of the years are how much we have talked about them. And right. there's no shortage of conversation that we've had about the whale. So another movie that we haven't been able to stop talking about since it came out was a movie that I haven't been able to stop saying yes to. And that's Nope. Jordan Peele's third feature uh, film starring Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer. It feels like a modern sci-fi fable in the vein of Close Encounters mm-hmm. or Signs. But it is not like any alien story you've seen, I promise. Their dad, played by Keith David at the beginning of the film, has had a history of wrangling animals for Hollywood productions. And once he's gone, it's about the kids carrying on that legacy. Uh, But they're not as engaged with the industry or even the farm the way their father was. What's intoxicating about Jordan Peele is because he's committed to trying to give you something, deliberately try to give you something you haven't seen before, but it's all just not a fluke. It does tackle the the base, essentially the themes of filmmaking itself as an artifice, you know, and, and, it, and it focuses on the actual act of filmmaking. And and it, and it strips that down to so many things. It's, it's really about capturing, you know, uh, not only that one big shot, but capturing proof of something greater than ourselves. It never loses its sense of adventure. Uh, there is a mystery here. You are learning more with the characters as you go on. Also love the sibling relationship in this. It's my favorite. So it's my favorite siblings of the year. Just so lived in and so well acted. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Kiki Palmer's energy in this is off the charts. Um, Great year for Kiki. Yeah, definitely. She'll be the first to tell you to. Steven Young's performance is so good. Um, the way the the, the parallel storyline with him as a child actor on the sitcom he grew up on with that had suffered a horrible accident. I mean, there's just so many thematic connections in this that work incredibly well. The wide angles in this movie, the the scope of it, uh, you never lose the sense of scale of the sky, of the farm, of all the crazy stuff that's happening. And this UFO of sorts itself is a fascinating character oh. with such a personality. You can just tell. And even on the first time watching this, the jean jacket in this is going to become mm-hmm. one of the most iconic 21st century monsters in film. Yeah, easily. I just found myself smiling when I wasn't screaming. And um, and then the actual implementation of the title in the dialogue, I would never ruin it, but it doesn't disappoint. One of my favorite things about this movie is how I was untraining my brain watching it because I was like, this should this is the way this scene should go or this should be happening this way. And then it didn't. And I realized that I was sitting up in my seat in the theater. I was sitting up further and just and just hungry for what it was going to show me Mm -hmm. next. What also was invigorating before uh, we wrap this up, Michael Wincott. In this you were movie. you were squealing next to me when uh, you showed up. But if you saw it, watch it again because even if you liked it, you're going to get more out of it. I would bet money. I think what I'm finding a trend of this year and our favorite films of the years are big, big, giant themes and ideas condensed bottlenecked into a small scale story Mm -hmm. and i think it's hard for me to think of one that nails it just knocks it out of the park more than our next favorite film of the year which is the banshees of inishirin so this is the latest film from martin mcdonough who has had a pretty impressive track record i would say um and this might be (laughs) this might be his best i'll be damned yeah It's a story about friendship or lack thereof Mm -hmm. and how as we get older, uh, not only do we withdraw, but we sometimes feel a need to trim certain people out of our lives. Colin Farrell and and Brendan Gleeson 
play men who, as far as we're aware, were very good friends up until a point. And now uh, uh, Gleason's character, Colm, decides he wants to terminate the friendship. I love how much just this comically simplistic story just just sits with me and just talks about how much human feelings of of resentment, of scorn, of bitterness just fester like a cancer. I love how funny it actually is and how distressing it is at the same time. Beautifully shot, great score, um, and some of the best performances all around of the year. Uh, Carrie Condon plays his sister, Siobhan. She's excellent. Hope to see her get nominated for this. She's another she will. Better Call Saul yeah, alum. She like to see them thrive, so good on you, Carrie Condon. It's an Irish period piece set on an island, and yet, of all the movies set on an island this year, I felt the least like isolated on this because I related to the story so much. I felt the claustrophobia of the island, but I never felt like it was small minded. Just in a simple relationship, just a simple friendship deteriorating causes enough stress and destruction um, and how that can just balloon. Because you see this gap widening between them. And yet there are these moments where they can reconnect uh, for very specific reasons. And you get a glimpse of what their friendship used to be. And that's just, that's just so sad and relatable at the same time. Animal actors in this knocked it out of the park. Uh, the Jenny, the, the Jenny, the, the donkey, the little donkey, and then the dog, the, the sheep dog. And an excellent contrast as these as these humans poison their relationships. The one true, mm -hmm. the one constant, which is always true um, in these situations, is that the purity of animals to just to just put things in perspective. I think this is Martin McDonough's most sensitive film by a country mile. I struggle to keep in touch with my friends as I get older. It's not always easy. And I don't I don't want to get rid of them necessarily like Colm does with, with uh, Patrick. This film has the clearest through line of any of his films. And that makes it all the more impactful. And that really helps his eccentric natures, his quirkiness, his, his black heartedness, really, really all of those to gel really cleanly and hit home. I, I look forward to whatever Mark McDonough is going to do next if it's more of this ilk, because I think this movie is going to age beautifully. It's our final, final film of the year that we both loved. Todd Field's Tower, ladies and gentlemen. I think as movie fans, we can all relate to the concept of a Super Bowl movie. All right. We know it's coming. We see the date, but it is going to be the biggest film event of the year for us. And Tar was my Super Bowl movie of 2022. It felt like the stars were aligning for this because Kate Blanchett is always amazing, but Todd mm -hmm. Field hadn't made a film in a while. Mm -hmm. Not since the excellent, excellent little children. It is an, an epic drama, an epic, I guess, psychological drama um, that doesn't go the places that you think. She's someone who's at the height of her craft as a composer and conductor. She is a difficult person uh, to like or love. Um, but you're instantly captivated by her because she's a fascinating person, but she has some skeletons in the closet, more or less, to put it simply. And these things slowly creep up as you get through the film. Found out recently, um, in an interview with Kate Blanchett, she mentioned that the film was originally written with a male character. Mm -hmm. And so flipping that is interesting to begin with, but it's not just an arbitrary flip. That interview that she's having, mm -hmm. that she's presenting, is, is just is is hypnotic that sets the stage for this film and you know what you're signing up for the movie never looks back and in a year of movies that are insanely long that are up two and a half three hours long this is not a movie that uh felt bloated it's scary there's a lot of this in this movie that as a horror fan i appreciated there's mm -hmm. a recurring uh uh motif in this uh of, of her waking up at night and, and that's just something I think we all relate to, you know, like something's not right in the house. It seeps in. The sound unease, design is amazing. The unease, the paranoia, the feeling, the ways that that parallels what, what journey you are going through. Some of the sins of her past are starting to rear their heads. Mm -hmm. You can't escape. It can't escape um, forever. One of the things that disarmed me the most and caught me off guard and was so surprised and pleased with this movie is how much how much it tries to bring in current conversations into the film, which I wasn't expecting, yeah. that we're having all today about 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 cancel culture, about um, the schisms between generations and this um, the the lines that form with identity politics. What ways are you trying to reduce 
their body of work and let the art not speak for itself by by filtering it through identity politics. And this opens up that kind of conversation. It it faces it head on, and it ends up being pretty intertwined. You don't even realize it that that's into the theme of the whole movie, into how you're looking mm-hmm. at this character and where she lies in her own in her own battle with that journey Mm -hmm. and that just that just took it to the next level for me so often when when lydia tar is speaking you you find yourself agreeing with her point even though she can be very blunt and sensitive and cruel to people because she's so confident i don't think either character on any side of those conversations is presented as having specific answer to our yeah to our our Mm -hmm. cultural questions and it really is a testament to just the understated brilliance and elegance and hyper-focus of Todd Field and his goal with this film. This is rich. This is immediately worth, I mean, we own it here. Very happy to own it because I cannot wait to rewatch it. And that just about wraps up our favorite films of 2022. Hell of a year. And I was so glad to to rein in the new one with you and, and reflect on all these great films that we've discussed. We're very lucky this year in 2022. I had to, it was tough for me to pick what I put on there. There have been plenty of years where I feel like I'm filling up. I'm just filling up a top 10. Things like The Northman, Nope, Tar. I'm like, I need to have these in my home. Uh, so... I think that's the true testament to to the you know the success of a movie, and I hope things sure. like Prey and Deadstream uh, do eventually become available on a disc because they need to be permanent. We'd love to hear um, if there's some movies you're absolutely like yeah gung ho about. If there's movies that you're like hell no, um, we'd love to hear any of that. Love to hear some of your favorite films of the year. Mm-hmm. Movies don't stop becoming relevant just because the year has ended. We can always talk about these, and these are some we're going to be talking about for for months and months and hopefully years to come. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. At Champs on Film, just as it's spelled. <laughs> you can also feel free to follow us on our individual Twitters as well. Marisol underscore Mariah. At Eisenthor, A-I-Z-A-N-T-H-O-R. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you movie lovers in 2023. Cheers. <laughs>